Hello and welcome to the definitive Dave the Diver menu guide. And when I say definitive, I mean definitive. I have all the dishes maxed out. So, with that in mind, I will give a guide to what's what. First of all, first thing to point out is all these dishes down here, although they say max level, are level 1. Everything above that is level 10. So we're going to organize them by price first, then maybe we'll look at taste afterwards. Right. But the first thing I'd like to say is that these dishes down here really suck. As in, you can see that they're only worth 7 gold despite having 10 levels, meaning that when you level them up, the value of them doesn't go up sometimes. And they also have low taste for, to go with that. Now I'm going to scroll through these basic sushis just so you can compare the price and taste stats and just see how bad they are. I do not rate basic sushis at all. As you can see, the price is slowly, slowly, yeah, the price is slowly climbing. But it isn't really that great. Among them, you'll see these dishes like the salted trigger fish and all that. These are pretty bad dishes because even though they have multiple servings, they don't really sell for much. So you won't get much use out of them. Next thing you'll see is the boss dishes start coming in. You know, see how weak the boss dishes are. I haven't served them because although they have cookster posts, they just aren't worth serving. Here is the last basic sushi, the Dunkleostusis. I hope I'm saying that right. But yeah, nothing above that is worth more, but even that is worth the low amount of 629. Here you'll see the final boss dish, and the first comparison I'd like to point out is this white leg shrimp has the same amount of servings, is more valuable, and tastes way better. So, the white leg shrimp is more powerful than the final boss. Confirmed. Anyway, moving on. Next thing you'll see is these couple of tuna dishes that aren't that great. Now, a lot of time we get into the cucumber dishes. Now, these actually start off with two servings, but only when you get them to level 10 do they end up with three servings. They're still pretty useless though. This is still a one serving thing, it takes too many cucumbers. This is the like one of the higher priced cucumber dish, but it takes spider crab, so it's really not that good. Like so all these cucumber dishes really aren't that great. Even this one, which does have like seven servings to be decent, is um, still kind of low on the price. This is the best tuna dish available, believe it or not. So tuna party kind of isn't, well, that great. Anyway, moving on. You can see pelican eel jelly and all that is quite low. We've got some other stuff like at the 1387 category. Then it moved like even seahorse udon, which yeah, seahorses are not a renewable, farmable thing. They have to be caught in the wild every time, so it's, again, not that great a dish. This requires so many great day eggs, it's not worth it. Uh, this is one of the two marlin dishes. Now, this actually is a very decent dish because it's like, I think it is, is the highest cost one serving dish. So if you need to fill out your menu with just one serving or something, this is a thing that you can go to, special fried shrimp sushi. Anyway, again, a non-renewable dish, not that great. Non-renewable dish, not that great. Takes great, like grade eight eggs and the Sally Light foot crab. You know, low servings on this one. They see the combo that was selling for seven gold. If you if you use your combos on this instead you could get much more mileage out of them. This dish is actually fairly good because 
It takes them very easy to get ingredients. This dish is the best jellyfish dish, so you'll kind of need this if you want jellyfish parties to go really profitable. I consider this one of the best curries because of how easy it is to make and how unstrained the ingredients are. Like beans are the least of your concern at the farm, really. This is one of the best dishes in the game because it only takes fish to make. So as you can see, I can make a thousand and twenty-one of them. It's really just that good. So yeah. On the same level, there's a lot of things that are 1,480 cost. This is another really good dish because all it takes is some stingrays and some salt, although these stingrays can be quite rare, some of them. But once you get them on the farm, you're basically all good. Same with this, like this even better than a stingray dish because it also serves 12, but at the same time, you need these squids which are really easy to catch and really easy to farm and salt. More grade A egg dish. I don't really care for them to be honest. This also, like this is at the same level as the ice fish curry, but it requires spider crabs and grade A eggs instead, which as you all know, are not great ingredients to try gathering loads of. This curry only serves six. Again, like seahorses, not that great. These calamari squid rings are pretty cool, but I don't like them just because of how they look, not because they're actually a good dish. Um, as you can see, this also serves 12, but requires buck bean, which really is kind of a pain to gather. This one's pretty decent because it only requires wheat, but it's not really, you know, it's on the same level as um, the crimson fish roll, so, you know, why would you bother? Uh, this is a really weird looking hot dog, but again, it's only on the 1480 category, so it's not that great. This has like one of the highest tastes available, but I think so at least. We'll see when I organize it by taste, but I mean, Unless you level it up in early access, it's going to take a lot of eggs, so it's not going to be easy to level up. Here we are, we're getting like a bit higher up now, the price has gone up. You know, this requires two sets of veg, not really ideal. This requires one veg. And onion is only a medium amount of needed. There we go, we're getting above 1,500 now. But again, this all takes a lot of veg. This one does look easy, but the spider crab kind of comes in and ruins it. Um, unless you're hunting tons of spider crabs, this ain't worth it. Again, egg on veg. Kind of like a... I mean, none of this really matters if you're not leveling up all your dishes. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. This is actually kind of surprising, because for a pure vegetable dish, it's actually really high priced, just low servings. This is the next stage up, where, again, it needs southern ball kelp, which is kind of annoying to get, and grade A eggs, so this isn't really an ideal dish. This is actually the most powerful shark dish, but it needs buck bean, which can be kind of annoying to gather. Dumbo takoyaki is actually a really good dish, although it does require wheat. And if you're leveling up all your dishes, wheat is something that you're going to be really strained on because there's a lot of wheat dishes. But if you're not leveling up all your dishes, this is a really good one to go to because mayonnaise and Dumbo octopus is easy to get and wheat does grow really fast so you are getting wheat every day but at the same time if you're leveling up your dishes you're going to want to save that wheat but if you're not this is a really good dish the humble squid ink pasta really surprising to actually see it this high up because 
it is one of the Challenger Chef dishes, and it's actually like the fourth highest. Well, I mean, it's tied with these ones, so. I guess it's like a. I think it's joint second. Yeah, joint second. So, you know. It's. Well, not second, but joint fourth with four other dishes. So, yeah, like. I mean, the garlic and wheat can be a bit of annoying to get hold of. Not really much the wheat, but the garlic, but. And also, it does take a lot of them. This is both the best shrimp dish and the best cucumber dish, which is always good. As you can see, although it does require black coral, it really is worth farming black coral for this dish, because you need to farm black coral for the jellyfish dish anyway. So black coral is an ingredient that is used on three out of the seven parties. This is the best marlin dish. Um, although it requires southern bull kelp, which, again, you need to farm. And if you're farming it, you're not farming black coral, so it's kind of a... You know. So at the same time, if you really wanted to, you'd split up, like, the black coral and... Southern bull kelp and... Buck bean and farm them all so you actually can serve all three of these dishes. And then that would be, like... Four out of the seven parties, combined with the jellyfish, tuna, what was the other party? Oh yeah, curry. You'd have basically all that you need. As you can see, there's no real curries up there, so yeah, the ice fish curry is the best curry in my opinion. And here you see the great barracuda canopy, which I hope I pronounced that right, but it only serves six though, which is pretty unfortunate for its price range. And it also requires barracuda, which do take up quite a bit of space in the fish farm. And also cherry tomatoes and onions at the same time. So it can be a bit tough to get those dishes out. But as you can see, these three are on equal level at the top here. Now let's sort by taste and see what happens. This is quite a different story. Like a very different story by the looks of it. I'm not going to scroll through all of them, but as you can see, the boss dishes are quite low taste. Well, in amongst the basic sushis. Pretty much all of them. These dried stingrays, although they're a good dish for money, apparently they taste not that great. As you go up, you can see some of the more useless dishes. Makes me look at this egg omelette and wonder why I bothered. Like, for its taste and what its price range is. It's nothing special. It's in the 1480 range, which, let's be real, loads of stuff is. So, it's got loads of stiff competition and this is not it. I'm telling you, that's not it, chief. This is a good dish if you're not harvesting the bull kelp. You can definitely put this out, so... I can't fault that one. Crimson fish roll, although it has low taste, just the ingredients alone make it such a good thing. You know, great spider crab curry, all that. The shark head apparently tastes better than all of that, which is pretty weird, but whatever. Seasoned jellyfish is just a head, but again, this is the best jellyfish dish, so what are you going to do? Again, this is like the best marlin dish, so what are you going to do here? Like, you know... This is the best curry. Yeah, no, this is a really weird look at it from a taste perspective. This free colored squid roast is actually quite good on taste and money, so. But yet the vampire squid on its own tastes better somehow. Okay, well, sure. This tropical fish sushi set is actually quite high on taste, actually. I 
And I find it weird looking at all these regular dishes mixed in. Like, okay, so the marlin meat on its own tastes better than any of the marlin dishes, but really doesn't sell for as much, so it's not worth. This thing has high price and high taste, so... Yeah, this one's actually really good, if you look at it that way. I don't know why this is up this high, like, deep fried veg, really. Okay, the sailfish. But again, above the sailfish and marlin dish, it's really weird. Here we are, like, here's a basic sushi again, but is it the last one? Now, apparently Xenocanthus tastes better. It's really weird looking at it from this like, perspective. Like, oh yeah, so the pelican eel jelly, despite having a low, one of the lower prices, actually has a really high taste. And yeah, here, here's what I was saying earlier about the batfish rice bowl. It's actually on the top row here, fourth best. Apparently a smoked amount Atlantic mackerel sc scramble is uh, a better taste. Deep fried eggplant shrimp meatballs there's also a better taste. What's really weird is the best taste actually comes from a basic sushi, the Sea Dragon Onigiri. Which is really wild when you think about it. Like, So if you actually need to level up your cook stuff with taste, and you have the glacial area unlocked, instead of taking Sea Dragons to the Seahorse races where they performed good, just take them to the kitchen and turn them into this. And you should have easily be able to like ascend through the cook's rank because its taste is going to be so great that you know it's going to shoot up. But yeah, no, that's a weird one. But anyway, to go through what menu like I'd say if like I'm building like if you want to get to this stage where you have all the dishes maxed out, what you actually want to set on your menu is this because it only requires salt and fish that you're forgetting from your fish farm, and as you can see. You can get stuff in abundance in Fish Farm. You want to set this on, same principle. You want to set that on for the same principle. Now actually, you have a couple of ways to go about this next part. You can either basically just add ingredients to one of the top two, and then you'll have exactly 45 servings, which is what you need at a Diamond Ranks cookster. Or if you're like me and want to keep the menu diverse, although this does cost rice, but rice is not an issue, um, you put the Tropical Fish set Sushi set on, and you put on... Where are they? I lost them now. There they are. Special Fried Shrimp Sushi. Now that will also add up to 45, but as I said, if you literally just add on, like click add ingredients to the three color squid roast, you'll get 24, 24, 36, 45, and you don't need those two at the bottom, so I've added up to 12 anyway, but, and you'll make more money doing this anyway, and it's not like the three color squid roast couldn't handle being put on for a second serve, set of servings, you know? The other thing I want to show is just how... Um, not valuable salt is because as you can see the dishes that it's used in is four of the boss dishes which you're either only going to serve once or not going to serve the salt grilled red tooth trigger fish which is useless the sea grapes jellyfish sushi which is also pretty useless but you know and of course if you're leveling up these two yeah but overall these two it's like it's only got four good dishes, really. So you can actually really stockpile a ton of it. Like, if you're sending out towards the dispatch, yeah, it's just going to build up. And even in the late game, what you're dispatching isn't really what you're waiting on. As you can see here, I just dispatched every day, like everyone. I, although I do have a lot of dispatching staff. And right now I just have them on buried, so I just get a constant flow of everything. But... You know, you can, focus, you can put them on focusing on things. At one point, I did have all the staff literally going after olive oil because of the amount of olive oil dishes there are. And I can show you that. Like, have you seen how many olive oil dishes there are? 
be able to show you what I mean about wheat. Have you seen how many wheat dishes there are? Compared to something like the tomato eggplant, you can't even scroll. Cucumber, you got a little bit of scroll. Bean, you can't scroll. You got a little bit of scroll here, a little bit of scroll here. A bit more scroll here, but not really anything significant. There's a lot of rice dishes as well, but the rice has its own section of the farm, so that really does not matter. But yeah, as you can see, the wheat here, a lot of dishes need wheat, and they're all good dishes. In fact, you can see three of like the fourth place dishes require wheat. Eggs. Again, like eggs are kind of annoying to get a hold of. Like they are like the thing that you will be waiting on if you're trying to level up all your menu items. Like as in, I got to a stage where I didn't actually need anything from the farm after farming just wheat for a while because I got rid of all the other vegetables and only did just wheat. But the eggs really are quite a strain if you want to level up everything. So if you're picking egg dishes, make sure to pick correctly. I just realized this list is actually in price order. So you can actually see what the best dishes are for a given ingredient. And as you can see, the boss dishes are always at the bottom because they're terrible. We'll actually go through the vegetables and what their best actual thing is. So here you can see that the Haddock Aqua Plaz Pizzazz? Uh, uh, I, I didn't even know. I can't pronounce this. Don't shoot me. Um, but yeah. As you can see, this is the best dish here for the carrots. We'll skip that out because no one harvests oh, great spider crap. This is actually the same price as that. So I'm going to call Ice Fish Curry the best dish for beans, believe it or not. Because, well, it works on the curry party night. It's the best curry. The the curry above it, this green one, only serves six people as opposed to nine people that Ice Fish Curry does, so it's not as good, even though it's saying it tastes better. Doesn't matter, it has way less servings. The wheat dish, your best dish here is Dumbo Taco Yaki because these other two dishes next to it, this one requires a bit more effort and this one requires a lot more effort to make loads of. And if I remember correctly, the servings on the Dumbo Taco Yaki are nine. I'll check that real quick though. Yeah, nine. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with serving this dish. Nine is a very good number for servings. The only one that beats it is like 10, 11, or 12, but you, those dishes are few and far between. So, the cherry tomato, your best dish is Great Barracuda Canopy, um, as it turns out, which kind of means the Haddock Aqua. Because, like, you know, they got to change that out for something else. Probably the narwhal miso soup, if it don't require anything crazy. Yes, yeah, so this is probably your best carrot dish now, because you're not going to make this because you're using cherry tomatoes up here. And it's going to be the same with onion, but... It also serves 12, so... Can't knock that. And as I said, with onion, great paracuda. Although, if you did want to use the carrots for the haddock, you would then use the onion for the Antarctic octopus Carpaccio. And I'm butchering these pronunciations, probably. Eggs. You're best off using this peacock squid rapini. Unless garlic comes in somewhere else. In which case, it would be a batfish rice bowl. Cucumber, season whopped here, Theo Dennis, no brainer here. Like, look at its price comparison and taste comparison to everything else. It just absolutely stomps everything, no question. Eggplant, it's going to be this thing that actually uses garlic, so. But again, it also has quite a low serving size, so you might actually be better off doing the deep fried eggplant shrimp meatballs, but who knows? Grade 8 eggs, they suck all around. No matter what dish you pick here, it's um, 
Let's see. Requires ball kelp. Requires non-renewable crabs. Requires non-renewable crabs. Vegetable dishes. And th these will eat through your sea plants. And this is just takes two grade A eggs for one bowl of soup. Grade A eggs are just honestly the worst ingredient there is. Like nobody likes them. And with garlic, I mean, this also requires wheat, but you're using that for gumbo takoyaki. This eggplant thing is low. So yeah, it's probably the peacock squid rapini. That's what you want. Oh, uh, that one. Rice. I mean, you have an excess of rice coming out of everywhere, but it's interesting to look at this, like, in this perspective, where, as you can see, got some quite low down rice dishes. And these are the rice dishes I generally use on the menu just because they are, well, they just require the rice and nothing else. And they also have the correct serving sizes for what I'm going for. But, I mean, I don't think I, wish. I don't consider rice being a particularly strained resource when you get past um, a certain point because you have a large farm that grows 13 of it each time. So, kind of stocked. Um, as you can see here, the, the only two dishes worth anything. Uh, the omelet and the seahorse salad, but again, this is just kind of, I guess maybe the Latok omelet is the best way to go about it because, well, what else are you going to use Latok for? The agar. I never actually realized agar was so low down on a ingredients totem pole, as it were. Like the best dish it has is pelican eel jelly, which it's actually a hard dish to make, so, you know, at that point, you might as well use your agar for that if, you're, if you have a ton of that laying around. Because pelican eels are easy to get, agar's easy to get, and I'm pretty sure there's another ingredient, but I'm pretty sure that's not hard to get either, from what I remember. Where is that, Where is that jelly? There it is. Ah, yeah, black vinegar. No, 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 no one's worried about black vinegar. You chime. I guess it is a bit of boiled sailfish and seaweed that you want to be saving this for. So when you actually do serve the sailfish, you know, it's the only thing that's actually worth serving it, like using the kajime for. Because if you look, it's about a thousand ahead of any other dish that it can be used in. Like the second one is like literally uh, like over a thousand lower than it in price. So here, kelp. Now, since you don't want to be using grade A eggs, probably. The deep sea tempura is probably the best way to go for kelp. Seaweed. Again, that seaweed roll on, but kind of isn't that great. It uses like great A eggs. So actually, if you did want to you get buck bean and use it for the falcata soybean paste, it's actually not a bad idea. As you can see here, black coral has two of the best, like, Two dishes that do three party days. I'm pretty sure the roasted capelin can also be used for curry, but don't do that. It's, it's not worth it. You've got better curries out there that don't require the difficulty of black coral, but these two dishes up here are definitely worth doing because seasoned jellyfish you'll need on the jellyfish party if you want to get serious money on that night. And this is both shrimp and cucumber party, the only good cucumber dish. And one of the best, uh, and the best shrimp dish by a, a little bit of a margin. So there are other shrimp dishes out there, but this one is still the best. As you can see here, you got this, which the the ramen isn't that great, but like you know, especially compared to like when you could be saving all your bull kelp for marlin party nights. Buck bean, here we are. You know, if you want to do the best shark dish, you can, because the seaweed has very little other use, so, you know, the falcata soybean paste soup is a good one. And yeah, like, I don't think anyone's concerned about what um, seasonings are required for what, but if you are, 
take a quick look. Yeah, as you can see with the curry and the turmeric, these are what counts for curry night parties. Um, ice fish curry just absolutely stomps. Like, it's equal to these ones, but these ones are either harder to get ingredients for or has less serving, so it's just not worth it. And all these are lower price. Salt, as you can see, as I talked about earlier. You know, you only really care about free coloured squid roast and dried stingray. So, again, really good one. Miso. Okay, that would be the soybean paste soup here, up there. Interestingly enough, both the buck bean recipes also require miso. How about that? And sesame seed. I guess that's blue bluefin tuna rice bowl. We'll just save it all for that because that is your tuna party dish. I'm going to load the game and put on the best party dishes in the menu so you can see them. But look how bad my farm is now that I don't care about it. Alright, I accidentally visited the dilapidated farm, but whatever. Alright, now let's put all, all the best dishes for the parties. This is a good party dish. This is the best party dish. Alright, so that's three out of them. We'll uh, put on that. Yeah, now if you had a buck beans, this is actually pretty good. Uh, where is it? Right, so I got all of that. Put on seasoned jellyfish next. Where's our ice fish curry? And where's that rice bowl? Yeah, as you can see. Those behind me are the best, best dishes for parties. Like, each respective party, these are the dishes you want. I mean, if you can afford them, that is. Like, these these ones are kind of at odds with each other because of the rare plants, ocean plants that you need. Actually, these four, I should say. But, and most of the time, you will be needing black coral. But if you can build up a stock of all of them, you'll have a good way of actually just pumping out this stuff. Especially considering, like, these two, they'll, if you look in your fish farm, they are two of the three creatures that are actually worth farming. So you can have, like, 55 of each of these just sat in a fish farm. And they'll reproduce quite a lot of them, more than you can use. So you'll have a massive surplus of both the Waptia field ennis and the Palcatus. If you're going for a pure money build, you know, I'm thinking, what's not too expensive? So there's that, that's definitely not expensive. Too low serving size for my liking. It's tough because you've really got to decide what you want. Yeah, it's actually more difficult than I thought to actually decide what the best dishes are. I think it's actually a lot down to personal preference as well because now I always like just throwing them on and you're done with it. But you know what? Maybe if I replace Crimson Fish Roll with a Dumbo Takoyaki here. Like say for example I did that. That just feeds everyone. Like, how is that not good? You know? You know, that's a lot of personal preference in the menu area. Like, as you can see, there's loads of high level dishes. There are absolutely tons. I do need to farm a bunch of my ocean plants back because I did use a bunch of them because these were the final dishes I leveled up. Yeah, it was because or was it like so? I think I also leveled up some of these um, ones down here. Maybe I don't know. I really don't remember, but oh yeah, it was these two as well. Like these were my final four: the combo sandwich, the smoked Atlantic mackerel scramble. Lapapom and rolled seaweed and rolled seaweed omelette. All of them were my final four because just of the eggs that they required. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's 
It's a very interesting look at it. Let's see, wait, let's see dish, dish. What does it mean by dish? Like, why is it? I think this is broken because show me that up here. Oh no, it's telling me how, because oh, based on how many I can make. Oh, I see. I have so many bat fishes. This bat fish insane. How many bat fish I have. But I've been farming them for like since early access, so makes sense. So yeah, this is um this really does show how easy some dishes are to get in abundance later on. Don't be fooled, that's not renewable. You can only capture them in the final mission. Yes, I could organize it by... I wish I was organized by servings. Pan glory, but whatever. As you can see, three colored squid roast very high up on my amount of dishes I can make with it. And stingrays kind of high up. As you can see, that's why I put on this, that, that, and that. Just literally because I have an abundance of them. A lot of that. Like, you know, that's why I have my menu set out like that because when I was leveling up my dishes, that was how I was basically like, well, you know, I don't need rice for anything. If I did need rice, I have an abundance of it anyway. All the rest of it just takes salt and some fishes. Salt's not hard to obtain. It was almost like, they just use an ingredient that were really, really easy to obtain, as opposed to some of these ingredients down here, which get harder and harder to obtain. Like grade eight eggs, the bull kelps, like buck bean and all that stuff. Like some of these are just down here because I just haven't farmed enough of some fishes. The other ones are down here because they just generally are kind of annoying to actually get a hold of. Yeah, no, like, uh. But in case. You know, in case. I'll go through like this real quick. A bunch of these dishes might not actually be on their guide. Okay, now I know. I, I, yeah, okay. And hopefully this video gives you a good insight on what the menu actually is and what the best things actually are. If it didn't, well, you know, make your own conclusions from it and check out uh, there's a Steam guide, the guide to Bancho's menu. That will have it all tabulated out when it's fully updated so at that point you'll be able to like read through there in a list format if like the moving video isn't really helpful for you anyway have a good day